for all of you that are new that are coming in uh, to the uh, webinar right now, um, this is obviously the Accelerate Tourism uh, Marketing Meetup. We focus on digital marketing uh, here for uh, tourism owners, operators, business leaders, and um, our usual host, Carl Lefever, is uh, he is actually joining the call today, but uh, I am going to be hosting today along with my friend Scott, co-worker, and he's going to help uh, moderate and also join in with our panelists uh, Tony and Jamie. We'll give it another minute while the numbers keep coming in. Make sure everybody's in. It feels weird that this is the, this is obviously the first uh, well, this is obvious for, for those of you who have, who have been with us uh, for the past couple of months. This is the first meetup we've done on kind of a monthly schedule. We are obviously doing this uh, um, weekly when, you know, the majority of the state and the country was shut down. Um, so we, we're moving now to this monthly rhythm and uh, we hope it'll give us some more time to, to improve the quality and uh, improve the engagement of, of what we're doing here. And uh, we hope that we continue to, to be helpful. And uh, I think we will. I think we have a, uh, a great panel and a great discussion on, on the docs for us today. Um, so as a segue, obviously, we are talking about uh, social media. This, is, uh, this was the highest, um, the highest rated or the highest, the most requested topic from our last meetup, we, had, we ran a poll where uh, you all voted to, to suggest what you wanted to talk about. This was the, um, the clear most popular topic. So we wanted to, we weren't sure, there was a couple of different ways that we could kind of go into this and, and, and take this discussion. Um, but the, the main thing we wanted to do was uh, really talk about social media from the perspective of somebody who is a business owner, somebody who is really busy, um, and how can they actually, how can they effectively um, do social, uh, you know, when they have no time and no budget. Now, obviously, let's just put something out on the table to be clear. Um, that's like, that's idealistic. We know that uh, there's, there's certainly going to be things that, um, you know, if time is money, there's obviously going to be cost here in some way, shape or form. Um, but I think the thing that we want to kind of combat is that, you know, social is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be this thing that comes naturally and cause we're already doing it in our personal lives and it should be just as easy for our business. Um, but that doesn't typically happen. Um, so I think the ideal for the busy, the busy small business owner is to build a process around social media that achieves, uh, the feeling that social is just naturally happening. Um, and that it, but maybe in other words, it's so integrated into what you actually do, um, that it kind of just happens. Uh, and you know, that, that in itself might be idealistic, but I think that is maybe a more achievable way of thinking about uh, how social can work for somebody who's busy that has no time and no, no budget. Um, but the first thing uh, about that, I think it's important to set uh, a healthy perspective on social um, because I think a lot of it is just really kind of this mindset. Um, and I think we need to just watch ourselves when we're, we're on social and we're, uh, we're seeing these other sort of social media stars or uh, influencers or whatever we want to call them um, and make sure that they're not setting the standard for what we're doing. I think that's, it's pretty, I think that's a good foundation because, you know, there's a lot of industries out there. There's a lot of businesses out there who have been very successful in social and they more than likely have spent a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of money um, in making social seem like it's so easy and so high quality for them. So just like any other skill or trade or craft that we might have, um, you know, 
if we're just starting out, if we're just starting to try to figure these things out, we're going to be less polished. We're going to be less flashy. Um, but we do have one advantage for social media is that we will be authentic because social loves authenticity and um, it loves transparency and it loves people being real with each other uh, and, and real to their customers. That is, you will build a solid uh you will build a solid group that will be actively following you as kind of your foundation. So, and that is really kind of the advantage you have when you're starting out. Um, so the, all of that said, I think one other rule we would like to apply on, on how we want to go forward, and this is going to kind of set up the question for today. Um, you've probably heard this before, but it's the 80, 20 rule. Uh, so it's this idea that we can achieve 80% of impact with only 20% of effort, or um, I guess in other words, like accomplish 80% of our goals with only spending maybe 20% of time or 20% of our resources um, to achieve kind of like 100%. Uh, so it's, that's kind of the thing. How can we best spend our time or what's the best thing for us to do with the smallest amount of time? That's really the question I want to use as the foundation going into the conversation. What is the best thing for me, for us, for, you know, for, to do with the smallest amount of time that we have? So that's where we're going to get into. Just as a reminder, though, um, we do have... Uh, a feature to, on this webinar um, format where you can ask questions. So while you're getting into it um, and while we're discussing, you know, please uh, use the Q&A feature. It will, uh, it'll just help us kind of move on and in, into uh, the Q&A uh, with uh, some great questions. So anytime you have a question during it, please hit that button. Please put in a question and we'll get to it after our discussion. So with that, um, I want to move over here to uh, our first question. Again, obviously, managing social media with no time, zero budget. And the first thing I want to set up for this question is with the many different platforms that we have, how can we evaluate, how can we prioritize uh, where we post. So that's the first question. Um, Tony, uh, Tony Gorick is the um, manager for the creative services manager at the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce. And Jamie uh, Burkhardt is the social media manager and events coordinator at the Amish Farm and House. This is your second time joining us, Jamie. Thank you. So that's it. We're here. How can we prioritize <laughs> and evaluate where we want to post? The floor is yeah. open to either one of you. Tony, you want to start us off? Sure, definitely. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, I am excited to be on this. Uh, like, like Sam said, I'm from the Lancaster Chamber, and then also I've been involved in communications for the Recovery Lancaster Project, which is the um, economic uh, recovery plan for Lancaster County, too. So we've been uh, deep in social media strategy uh, with little, little uh, resources. So this is good timing. Um, I think the biggest thing about evaluating where um, and how to utilize social media is to really know your audience. And I know that sounds um, that sounds easy, but it's it's so critical to deciding what platforms to use. Uh, you know, there's resources, and um, I know Sam mentioned maybe gathering some of these resources after this call. But there's resources really showing the demographics of Facebook compared to Instagram, compared to you know, Snapchat and, and LinkedIn and things like that, where if you're selling a certain product or, or if you're marketing a certain experience and you know you want to hit a certain demographic, certain age group, um, you know, certain area even, uh, you want to make sure you're utilizing the social media platforms that best uh, capture that. So, you know, at the Lancaster Chamber, for instance, we are uh, very B two B, and we are we skew much older in our in our audience. So very uh, our our efforts go more into Facebook, LinkedIn tend to be older demographics. Um, you know we're not going to be signing up for TikTok any soon or anytime soon. Just want to uh, 
<laughs> say that. Um, but you know, you might have, uh, you know, an escape room or a Cartoon Network hotel who, you know, is targeting families but also kids, and um, you want to you want to evaluate the platforms. Uh, it's I think the word social media marketing is very overwhelming, especially to people who are not used to it and think, oh my gosh, I need to be on every single platform posting 16 things a day and it all needs to be super creative and interesting and that's just not the case. You really want to look at your audience, have that influence, what platforms to use, and then I know we'll kind of talk about this a little bit later too, but, and then uh, curate your content based on that audience and that platform. So. I'd, I'd caution um, signing up for every social media platform possible. Uh, it's 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 really reliant on who you want to reach, and then that will help influence how uh, many resources you put into what platform. That's great, uh, Jamie. Do you have anything to add to that? The only thing I would add to it is if you are going to be on multiple different platforms, like if you want to use Facebook and Instagram, which might seem like a lot to some people, but if you're going to play both games, then post different things. So Instagram, the caption sizes need to be way smaller. Nobody's clicking to read more. On Facebook, people are spending a little bit more time, so you can obviously put more information. So if you want to play both games, you just have to go at it differently. Um, like, for example, Twitter does not work for travel whatsoever. I don't. I personally never plan a vacation while I'm getting on Twitter. I get on Twitter to laugh. But on Instagram, you know, if I'm going to the beach, I'm going to be clicking what beach I want to go to and then seeing people's posts. So just knowing what platform is best for your business. So if you're bed and breakfast and you want to post 20 new pictures, well, Instagram only lets you post 10. So maybe Facebook's the best way to go. So knowing what type of resources both of those platforms have is great. So like on Facebook, you can post an event. On Instagram, you can't. But Instagram, you can put up a story saying count down to the event and people are going to be like, whoa, 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 wait, there's something happening in two days. This sounds really interesting. So knowing what platforms offer helps you evaluate which one you should use. That's great. Um, it's, yeah, it's one of those things where I think it's just our, our human nature to kind of want to uh, think of everybody, which is a good thing, but that just becomes tiring. And, uh, you know, just because your audience is on a particular platform, Jamie, your example was great. Like, doesn't mean that it's the platform that's going to work for your business. Um, so even if you were on that platform, uh, doesn't mean that your business needs to be on that platform. So uh, the second thing I want to talk about is um, content. Content is something that can really be a mental block for people just because it can seem overwhelming, especially when we see uh, like the high quality content that these platforms, you know, host and that these people that are posting on these platforms create. Um, but for a business, who has a business leader who has no time to do it, just saying, just seeing those and thinking that, Oh, that's the standard. I have to do that. Like can just, it can be enough that it just says, you know what, I'm not even going to pursue it. So I think the thing that we found in, in our business um, and for our clients is whether or not we actually realize it, there's a lot of content that's typically created already um, in a business that can be, you know, if you find it, if you identify it, you can repurpose it uh, for social. So just a, a, the question that I have for that is how can we do this? How can we discover and repurpose content? Jamie or Tony, either one of you want to take that? I'll take it, Tony. Great. Okay. Okay, so one of my biggest hacks is reposting other people's pictures. <laughs> um, obviously, I work in a very, very specific thing, Amish. So there's millions of people that come here every year. I am so, so fortunate that people take good pictures of the Amish and that mm. they want to do that. So it is easy. You just follow hashtags, download the repost app, repost it, give them the credit in the comments. Usually people love their pictures being reposted. So even if you find a professional photographer, 
they think it's great exposure. So reposting other people's pictures. If you're going to use your own content over again, like there's a thousand pictures that I keep wanting to use. So what I usually do, if I've already posted it, like say it's a picture of an Amish buggy and I'm posting a fact about the Amish buggy, you know, come to Amish country, take a, a buggy tour. Did you know that they have turn signals? Uh, but I want to use that picture again because it's really good. What I'll usually do is repost it with a good review. So I'll take a mm. good review from TripAdvisor, from Google, and I'll, I'll use that as the caption. Um, because one, people don't remember that you posted it two weeks ago. Even if they did, it's going to be a different caption. So it's going to mean something different. And also it like makes that connection of, oh, that's a beautiful picture. And it's a beautiful review. Like those two things in my experience have worked really, really well. And then also just repost old things. Like honestly, no one is going to remember. Uh, mm. Or something I use is I will post a video on Instagram um, today and then three days later I'll post it on Facebook so even if I do have the same followers then they're probably not remembering that they saw it on Facebook two days ago or Instagram two days ago so I use that um, to help me gain more leverage with the content that I already do have yeah I like that so it's even you don't have to go very far to find that content because you're talking about just reusing the content that's actually already on these platforms that you've yeah. already posted or that you know, somebody else has posted and, you know, doing it in a way that's respectful and gives credit where credit is due. Um, that's great. Yeah, that's, yeah. that seems. Or cool. also like something that to other people can use too is, I know we're talking about time, but if you can take one day, like one beautiful sunny day that you've got people on your property, go around with model release forms, asking people to sign model release forms, be like, can I take pictures for the website? Most of them will be like, yes, oh my gosh, like, I'm going to be famous on Facebook. Like they love it. And then have them sign a piece of paper and then you're allowed to use that. Uh, I think that's something that's very, very underrated to do, which again, t it is time consuming, but those pictures, if you take 200 pictures that day, you can use them for a whole month. So it yeah. does help you. Yeah. Cool. And the other thing too, is you could always, if you have a friend who does photography or if you have somebody who doesn't, you know, of course, we are talking about a, a cost thing again, but um, there are a lot of, anybody who has a half decent camera who, you know, whether or not they are a professional photographer or not, if it's a nice day and you respect them to interact with your customers well, you know, I'm sure anybody would love, who's kind of like an aspiring photographer would love that opportunity if you know anybody like that. Um, mm -hmm. Cool, Tony, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I just wanted to affirm what Jamie said. I'm really glad you brought up the uh, not being um, concerned to repost something again, because I think some people think well, I'll post it and I'm done. And they put all this, you know, time and energy into this great post and they think, well, it's done now. And, and that's just not the case. So I'm really glad <laughs> you, you mentioned that. Um, I also think um, when it comes to repurposing content, I think of how social media, like you mentioned Sam earlier, which I'm really glad you mentioned, it's just the importance of authenticity and how your social media hosts and presence should be authentic. And so even if you have, you know, facts or sales or something that feels a little cold or stale in your organization, think about how you can repurpose that content in a, in a way that feels like more of a storytelling aspect or, you know, Jamie mentioned a, a cool fact or, you know, instead of, you know, saying, um, I don't know, we, we have, you know, this deal on hotel stays, try to, try to reformat that, try to repurpose that into something that's a little more uh, driven by personality and storytelling. Um, also because of social media, just really downplaying sales speech in general. Uh, they want you to pay a bunch of money basically to say the words like sale and <laughs> uh, discount and things. So um, I would just add that when you're thinking about repurposing, even think about repurposing things that you already are doing from even a sales perspective, you just might need to funnel it through a storytelling perspective um, to kind of pull some of that authenticity out um, on social. Yeah. And the storytelling thing is, is pretty key because uh, um, like some of the stuff that we've done for our clients uh, you know, we don't do like actually part of our services. Uh, we don't actually manage a lot of our clients' social media accounts. It's something that some of our clients have asked about, but we just don't do that yet. Um, but we've repurposed content in other ways. And, you know, whoever we're working with on social, we will suggest, hey, 
you know, we've repurposed this piece of, we've repurposed this blog article into a video or we've uh, taken all these different uh, sales sheets and turned them into like an ebook. Um, so I think when you get into it too, like some of the, the content that might be out there in your business already are even print materials that you, you know, that may have been created for, from a long time ago, or even, you know, photos of your business that are physical photos that you could simply just take your phone, put it in, in a nice, like outside or somewhere where the, the lighting is nice and bright and even, you know, just take a quick photo of that photo and just repost it. So it's, um, it doesn't, there's probably a lot like even outside the stuff that you've already posted, you can take and just copy the text from, or, uh, you know, you might actually have to physically type it out instead of just copy and pasting. Um, but there's probably a lot of assets uh, that your company already has, or that your business already has um, that, you know, you can maybe just use to, instead of having to feel like you need to reinvent the wheel all the time. Great. Um, so this next question, uh, is very much related to that. And I think uh, Jamie and I think Tony, you both touched on an aspect of this, but um, this idea of how can we efficiently batch create and schedule content. So, you know, we, instead of having this pressure to be on social every single day, um, you know, it, that can just get tiring um, and it's hard to maybe keep up a, a rhythm like that that's so intense with creating content. Um, the one thing that I think is, it, uh, is wise to do, and it helps to create some strategy and intentionality around what you're posting, is to batch create the content. So, you know, whenever you have or whenever you schedule time to sit down um, for 10 minutes, you could probably, if you're, if you can get into the mindset that it, you know, it doesn't have to be this revolutionary, uh, artistically perfect photo, um, or you can start just knocking out like five posts at a time, a week's worth of posts you could essentially put together in five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, so just talking about that a little bit in your experience, how, how can we efficiently batch create and schedule content. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say social, I think people have the connotation with social media that it needs to be live all the time. And there's definitely aspects where there's live video components and there's some exciting things you can do with that. Um, but like Sam said, the user experience is not knowing you scheduled those five posts on Monday and, the, and it's posted on Thursday. Uh, so, so to the user experience, as long as you're, you know, using an authentic voice and, you know, even throwing in a throwback Thursday or whatever, being able to sit down and schedule those out and not feel that pressure, like, oh my gosh, I am in the middle of my crazy day and I need to throw up a photo about a, you know, throwback to an old building on my property. Um, those batching, that, that has helped so much. Um, with with just planning out time because i think some people think how do i even begin to plan out my time with social media strategy and that's a step one is you can always batch and i'm um you know there's i'm sure programs have been mentioned before like sprout social or like hootsuite there's platforms that are pre-scheduling um platforms that make it really really easy that also provide some insights that help too you can pre-schedule um some things directly on social media platforms too uh but i definitely think and we can maybe provide you with some of these resources afterwards but things like hootsuite and sprout social and some social um uh, scheduling software really really does help the one thing i would i would just as a caution with it, it's a great resource and, and it's fantastic. You just also want to be aware of what's going on uh, within the context of your community. Uh, things change, you know, I mean, you even you think about the last three months and the last thing you'd want is you have this great uh, post scheduled for Saturday talking about how beautiful and wonderful the day is. And that was the day where, you know, our COVID trend spiked and, 
protests were happening and and there was a lot of unrest and and it could come off tone deaf so so the the batch scheduling is great just you want to just be aware of what you're scheduling putting out there just so you don't happen to accidentally have a post go out there during <laughs> something that might feel like it's a little a little off for the moment jamie what are you thinking so I'm going to be 100% honest and say that I am super bad at planning ahead. I will obviously like use my, the scheduler on Facebook, like I'm leaving the next, the next day. I don't want to get up early to do it tomorrow. I'll schedule it. Um, but I, yeah, I got to be honest. I'm not one to sit down and be like, on Thursday, I'm going to post this. So what I do instead is I block out hours of the day. Obviously, this is my full-time job, so I've got it. I have time and I have money and I have resources. Um, <laughs> I'm also kind of like the operations manager here too. So the days can get really packed with things. Um, so I will get up early in the morning and my nine to 10 AM is Instagram. That's what I'm doing. I'm commenting on things. And then um, three to four is my Facebook time. So I'll get on Facebook and do it then. Like obviously I'm checking in between, but that's really when I'm sitting down and I'm focusing. And that kind of pattern has really just helped me to make my posts every day. Obviously, if I'm on vacation, if there's a day off, I have to do a tour, then I then I use the schedulers. Yeah. Uh, but like Tony said, scheduling too far in advance can sometimes bite you in the butt. Um, so I'm not the most organized person. And I think that's like good for people to hear because you don't have to. Like if you slip up, it's no big deal. My only big suggestion is if you're going to post, post regularly, pick a schedule like every once every week twice a daily like you just have to pick your schedule and keep rolling with it but don't fret if you sleep in and forget to post something because the world will never know yeah and i think that you know the key thing that you said there is you have you so you are you're valuing what you're doing on social enough that you're actually scheduling it into your day um and you know i know personally from um that that is not the easy thing for me to do um, or business owners to do because they have so many other commitments. Um, but it is like one of those things where we're not going to get around and we just kind of have to call it as it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously this takes time. Obviously in some ways it takes money. Um, but if you really want to value it, you can schedule that little bit of time to start off. Like if you're, if you're, or if you feel like you're going, if you feel like you're um, doing social and it's just, it just feels like a burden to you, it might be that you're just kind of, it's sort of like the spray and pray method. You're just kind of all scattered and, and you don't have a focus. And what you might want to do is just say, okay, I'm going to stop and I'm just going to, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just jot down on a piece of paper, uh, even he here's what, here's the three posts that I'm going to knock out or I'm going to put um, together for the week. Um, and it's just that intentionality. And I think with that intentionality, with uh, scheduling out, like even just the time that you're going to do it is it, it can make it, you can do it in less time that way. Um, mm -hmm because you're, you can kind of get in the mindset, you can kind of prepare for it mentally that, okay, you know what, and it's, it's noon right now and I said I was going to uh, sit down for 15 minutes at two o'clock and write social. So I, I can kind of be thinking that I need to mentally prepare for that when I get to two o'clock. Um, I, I think the other, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to, I was just going to add, um, I think a key part of it too is not to overthink the content that you're pushing out. I think sometimes I know from my experience too, I've thought, oh my gosh, every single post has to be this like fantastic in-depth something or, you know, this amazing photo or this really well thought out campaign. And like, like what Jamie even mentioned with that, you know, beautiful photo of the buggy and a, and a fact, I mean, that could be your post for that Thursday. And that's, I think I would just encourage people, you know, not to overthink, um, oh my word, when we think content, I think that even also is overwhelming. Like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I have to come up with content, just tons of content. <laughs> that yeah. content can also be a fact 
uh, every Thursday. You can even map out, oh my gosh, I want to be consistent. I'll do a fact every Thursday. I'll do a throwback every other day. I mean, you know, um, I just wanted to throw that in there too. When, when you talk about planning out social to keep in mind, it, it's all about engagement. And even if it's just, uh, you know, tell me your favorite memory from visiting Lancaster when you were here, or there's just, there's, there's short, sweet and easier things to do that might not feel as time inducive. Tony, that's a great segue. Um, so uh, the, and uh, Jamie, I think you might have mentioned this, but, um, or some aspect of this, but one thing that we can do on social is, is find things that are online or, or just find, find other stuff that's going on that takes no active participation of you to, to cr kind of create content. Um, but just find the content that's already out there that might be, uh, you know, one of your part business partners or uh, yeah. somebody else in another industry um, and just find stuff and put it in one place for your audience that's going to value it. Um, so, you know, there, this idea, uh, this burden of having to create content, uh, I think it comes from feeling overwhelmed when, um, you know, we're, we're viewing everybody else that's posting. But how can we just simply curate the content like that engages our audience? So, you know, you both have spoken on this, I think, in some ways, but how do you have, and Jamie, you talked a little bit about how you do it in practice. Um, maybe just some other examples would be helpful uh, because we kind of get the idea, but, um, you know, is there, are there some tools or is there some tricks that we can uh, find this stuff and repost it quickly? Um, so y if you want to repost pictures, use the, on Instagram, this is where I mainly repost pictures because it's the easiest to find. So follow hashtags. So if you're a bed and breakfast, mm. um, follow the hashtags that your bed and breakfast is located in repost pictures of, you know, maybe not the rooms of your bed and breakfast, but what there is to do in Lancaster, like, oh, look at this beautiful couple who had a beautiful weekend in Lancaster. They didn't need to stay at your bed and breakfast. Nobody needs to know that, but just giving that idea of, if you come to Lancaster, you're going to have a good time. Also using the location feature always on your posts. Um, so there's like a, a location for Amish country, Lancaster. When people post things on Instagram, they love to put where they are. That's a really easy way to find them. Um, another really good way of finding stuff to post really quickly is being organized in the first way. So like my photo albums are very, very organized. Like I have pictures of, I have an album of animals, horses, like everything is down to the nitty gritty. So if I'm like, oh, I need a picture of a dog, family friendly, bring your dogs to Amish country post, then I've got it right there. So that does take time on the back end, but it's something that's helped me in the future since then. Um, and something else that if I, cause I'm guilty of this too, like blocking out time for my social media and then not doing it because I had to go do a tour or something <laughs> is replying back to comments it's the easiest thing to do to make it seem like you are still engaging with your audience. So there might've been a post that I didn't think was going to do very well, but all of a sudden thousands of people are commenting on it. I'll just spend time replying back to people's comments. And it does make you, your page seem like you're doing more because that post will show up on people's timelines again, if you're commenting on it. I personally hate, 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 hate seeing people post something and then there's 63 comments and nobody's responding to them and they're asking questions or they're saying, oh, those were beautiful questions or pictures and things like that. Like you've got to engage with your audience if you have them, even if you just have one. Like if one person is like, oh my gosh, I love your pictures. And there's somebody who does it every day, post them every day, say, thank you. Thanks so much. Like easiest way to make it seem like you're still on board and posting. That's great. Tony, any thoughts to add? Yeah, I love that. I love what you said about interacting. And this might be something uh, we might have coming up to discuss. But uh, I think as much as we don't want to be on social media all the time because we don't have time, it is a customer service touch point now more than ever. Um, and so I really liked what Jamie said about, you know, liking people's comments, getting back to them, because that, you're right, that's that's key. Um, as far as content, uh, there's so many resources out there and I 
I, I, I want to say you're not alone in thinking about how to curate content. Uh, Jamie mentioned consistency earlier. So even coming up with, you know, on, on Tuesdays, I'm going to focus on this type of content, whether that's a fact about my business or, you know, and then on Thursdays, you know, there's always throwback Thursdays or something like that. Maybe I'll do, I'll do something um, specific about that. Maybe I'll do an employee spotlight or a visitor spotlight on Wednesdays. And I, and that, that at least to me, um, I'm a really creative person and that's a good thing, but it could also spiral totally out of control. And so when I have a framework like that, that also helps me just plan ahead and curate content. So it doesn't just feel like every week is like a blank slate or every week I have to think of 16 new great ideas. Um, you can kind of start following it, falling in those, those buckets. And then um, the consistency is there too, which always helps with social media. Uh, so I would just say, you know, think of, maybe step one is just think of a few things that you'd want to share about your company and then funnel those through different ways on different days just to kind of hone in and not feel so overwhelmed, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And, and uh, go ahead, Jamie. Also on that, don't think that things are too obvious. Like for me, mm -hmm. I always, always forget to post that we have a 15 acre farm because to me it's obvious, like come enjoy the farm. But for other people, they have no idea that we have a 15 acre farm, but I might've said that six weeks ago. And I'm thinking that my followers are already up with me. So like, if you have a bed and breakfast, you know that they serve breakfast, but maybe being like, Hey, we have waffles on the menu. Like, did you know that kind of thing? So hmm. no detail is too small mm -hmm. and nothing is too important to keep repeating. Like keep posting it in there. Cause you might get new followers and they don't know anything about your business. So yeah. little things are big. A great point. That's great. So a little bit is almost curating your own content. Another way to kind of say it. Um, great. And you two set up the next question perfectly. Um, <laughs> going back to the, the beginning of what we were just talking about. Um, you engaging in kind of this idea of real time. So uh, the use of live videos and kind of other time sensitive content um, you can, like I said, direct messaging, um, stories in some instances. Uh, those are obviously tools that have gotten so popular over the last, just say, two years even. Um, so how can we use these things like live video stories, uh, messaging for real-time engagement? You gave some great examples of commenting, which I wasn't even thinking of. Um, but, you know, these other ways that we can, you know, kind of be immediately in front of our audience. Um, what experience, what things can you recommend? How can we do that better and do it efficiently? So yeah. Tony, why don't you uh, take sure. us on that one? Yeah, so um, I think this is another one where, you know, don't overthink it. Even, you know, I'm thinking live video specifically, how, how video content right now is just so engaging and so popular. Um, some people think video content and they think, oh my word, it's going to be like a, a, a produced documentary film or you know, <laughs> something like that. And that's just so not the case with social media. It's, you know, like Sam mentioned, it's authentic, it's personality, it's behind the scenes, it's a sneak peek. It's, um, I love what Jimmy said about the, the uh, number of acres, you know, even just a live video of panning around the horizon of the acres, like just things that are just interesting that we take for granted or you know, we have uh, a pretty cool office at the chamber and we did like a quick office tour that, you know, did not take long at all. It was informal. You know, you got some personality in there um, and it just, it, it helps to A, build engagement, but also just to kind of show um, some behind the scenes things. Uh, I, I used to work at the 10,000 Villages home office doing their social media strategy and digital strategy. And uh, they would do just really quick, fun product reviews and they're still doing that now. Um, and you know, they're, they're 20 seconds long, quick show a product, quick, you know, say what it is. And, uh, you know, you hear people kind of shopping and laughing in the background and that's great. Like that, that shows, you know, environment and context. And so I think I would just say, don't overthink it specifically with the video. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I, actually the, I, I think, you know, depend, you know, some of the imperfections and the, and the personality gives it that authenticity. Um, and then I would just say, you know, as much as you don't want to be on social media all the time, make sure you are still monitoring it enough because it's a customer service 
uh, touch point now. Like I even think of my generation where like one of my first things sometimes to think about is to message the business on a social media platform before going to their website and using like a contact form. And I think that's even getting more and more prevalent as generations um, are coming up. So just to keep that in the back of your mind, it's, it's, you don't have to give tons of your time to it, but a response is so important eventually um, from customer service. Cool. Jamie, anything to add? Um, I'll touch on Instagram stories because I think that people are not using them as they should be. <laughs> Instagram has made it very easy to upload pictures from your phone. I don't know about anybody else, but my big, nice camera, I only use for Facebook pictures because it is so ridiculously time consuming to download pictures on your computer, then send it to your phone and then upload to Instagram. Um, so, you know, it's a beautiful day out. Just go out, push record there's a bunny running across the farm. Perfect content, put it up there, it's a beautiful day. It's very simple to do. Also, if I'm, if I'm being lazy and I don't wanna post anything, I will repost my own post to my story and just say like, oh, look how beautiful this was, do you remember this day? Um, also, reposting other people's, so when they tag you, you can repost it in your stories. Mm -hmm. Some of that might not apply to anyone because you don't have that many visitors or things like that. Um, and just reposting things that are happening right now. Like we have a quilt sale or tickets are going fast. Things that make it seem like you guys are actually busy and things are booming. Um, we also do a lot of like COVID safety things because we are a customer tourism business. So I'm always posting like, hey, our buses are being sanitized. There's a whole new group loading on. Everything's safe. So even if people were not thinking about visiting Lancaster, maybe they'll, they'll continuously hear me saying that it's a safe, open place. Uh, there's no contact here, then maybe they'll visit. So just easy things that, again, like I overthink all the time, but my visitors and my followers might not know that we have bus tours because I said it four weeks ago and not today. So using stories is very easy to do. That's great. Um, it's, uh, the COVID, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to mute you here, Jamie. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, um, I'm glad you mentioned the, the COVID thing. And uh, it's it, that, I mean, how can you be more real time than just addressing those things that we're always thinking about right now? Even if it's not, even if I'm not looking to come to uh, your business, it's just, uh, it's just a reminder. Um, and people, I was just going to add really quick. Sorry, Sam, I didn't mean to cut no, you off. Um, people just love, love, love behind the scene, behind the scenes peaks of things. It's just people just really like to see how things are working behind the scenes. I don't know if it, you know, it feels like an exclusive sneak peek. You know, I, I, people just really like that stuff. Um, so if you have a chef at your bed and breakfast, or if you have something, you know, a quick photo or video of them flipping a burger. I mean, it's just it. People just love to see how things yeah. I think are ticking from the background, and so again, to Jamie's point, what we take for granted as being part of these businesses might be super interesting and and fun for for your followers. Yeah, I love that. So all of this being said, we've talked about all of these these different things that we can do, but the I kind of have two last questions as we wrap up here, um, and the first one. Uh, you know, you both are active in running social media accounts. Um, how can we measure the efforts? How can we measure the success of our efforts? Because we obviously want to be able to evaluate enough that we can say, this just isn't working. I need to stop doing this. I need to stop this and I need to try something else. Um, so what, how do you guys, how do you both do this? How do you measure the success of what you're doing, what you're trying? Um, Jamie, why don't you take us on this one? That, Sam, that is a hard question because I have even had other people, oh, this is more for paid ads, like how do I know if my paid ads are doing well, but it would be relevant for any post. I've actually had other people like in my team look at my posts and say like, how would you have changed that wording to make it better? Because I feel like as a creative writer, you have your own style. And I feel like I post the same kind of thing. So I try to do mm. peer reviews to see if my posts could be better. I don't think 
at least for my business, I cannot tell by the amount of likes or comments or engagements if something did well or not, because it's hard for me to tell, like, did they book a tour? Like, where was the success measure? Like, that post might have blew up. It might have had a thousand likes. But did they just like it because it was pretty? Or did it make them want to come? Yeah. So I think, I think it's just hard. So instead of trying to focus on was it successful enough, I just keep trying to change it up. And in hopes, like, my follower count is growing. My engagement group is growing. So things are working. But I don't know for sure if it's actually money in the bank, which is the problem with social media because you might have lots of likes, but you might not have a lot of business, but you need to have social media. You can't just cut it out. So that's a, that's a hard question. You, you stumped me. I'm sorry. Tony, what about you? Uh, I mean, I think it's hard because I think like Jamie said, it's, it's easier with paid promotions because it's such a, you have such a clear objective of, you know, are you looking at, um, you know, my time at 10,000 Villages, it was very easy to say, okay, we had X number of conversions on this mug <laughs> based on, you know, our social media ads. It's hard because social media is so authentic and engagement driven. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes where I think like Jamie mentioned, like it's hard to track that because that is so important, but it feels a little more, um, a little more vague as far as trackability. Um, but it's so, I think it goes back to just how important brand awareness is. And this is such a brand awareness piece. And if, and brand awareness does directly impact your bottom line, it just might not be as clear of like, a, they saw this post, they booked this room, like Jamie said, or they saw this post, that means they bought this thing that I'm selling. Um, but we can't, we definitely don't want to underplay how important that brand awareness is because you never know who's sharing things. It's funny, there's a new, <laughs> you're going to get to know some of my quirks. There's a new Lego store that just opened downtown Lancaster <laughs> that I am beyond excited about. Um, but anyway, so I was just helping them just for fun uh, start up their social media because I was like, no, literally no one has any idea you're here and you just opened during a pandemic. So I, um, <laughs> helped them and just and they're now they're getting a lot of visitors from social because people are seeing but even just that brand awareness that okay people are finding them now and people might see and people are tagging their friends in it and to, to check it out is just that is so valuable too so I mean if you want to I mean you can like Jamie mentioned too with followers and engagement you can track trends you know, and even some of those platforms like Hootsuite or Sprout Social, there's some free platforms, free versions that help you track some trends. If you want to say, hey, you know, good, we, we grew X amount of followers this week. Or, you know, there's, there's some tactical things you can track. But uh, if you feel like, oh, my gosh, we're getting a lot of engagement, but there's still not something happening yet, still, still keep pushing with that engagement because it's so important from a brand perspective. Yeah. If, if that is helpful. I'm with yeah. Jamie, though, where it is, it's it's harder because it's you're track you're trying to track something that's not like a, a conversion sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and there's obviously ways to track those conversions, but sometimes that's not a good enough answer. Like you can tell when your website, you know, you click something and you can tell your Google Analytics is going crazy, but did they just want to click on it? Like, did it was it just something funny, or did it actually yeah. drive their thing? But so there's obvious ways that you can tell. And getting more followers is always a good thing. Like if your page is getting more followers, you're doing something right. In my opinion, that's kind of how you know that you're doing the good thing. Yeah, I think you you both summed it up in a pretty accurate way. Um, it is not a perfect science. It doesn't have the same trackability of, um, you know, some of the tools that we have or some of the capabilities we have with uh, tracking website visitors and things like that or, or email opens. and. Um, you know, I think the one practical thing that people can do if they want to, but this requires more time, is to um, encode their links uh, so they appear more um, literal in things like Google Analytics. Um, mm -hmm. But even then, it you, what is the effort for the payback? Like, I'm not sure if it always justifies um, that level of effort. Uh, but you both touched on something too that is uh, really important that paid ads really is another way to engage with social 
Um, and I'll use this to plug our next meetup actually, um, because in our agency, uh, we use, we do, when, when we utilize social media, specifically Facebook and Insta, we are running paid ads. And that is purely for the fact that we can better control and better reach people that we have not reached before and we can better track them. Um, because organic posting and, and just creating content and putting it out there, yes, you can evaluate likes, you can evaluate uh, the comments, engagement, um, some of those metrics that Facebook, specifically on Facebook includes, but it's just, you can almost t uh, drive yourself crazy by trying to view the information that they provide and make intelligent decisions. So it, it is hard. And, and measuring the success of, uh, of Facebook and, or any social posting, um, I think the, the way I think about it is you really have to take it with like a spoonful of salt. Um, you need to keep doing it and you need to keep engaging and you can kind of, I think of those likes conversations um, and uh, you know, that type of engagement is really kind of what you're going for. Almost like these kind of like micro uh, conversions, like, you know, it's kind of a term that people throw around there where it's not actual uh, purchases or things like that. But uh, the other practical thing too, is just traffic from your social to your website, uh, I think is, um, probably one of the easiest things. I think that, you know, when I'm evaluating our, the online presence of one of our customers, that's what we're looking at. So we're kind of up against the clock here and I want to get to some questions, but um, in the spirit of the 80-20 rule, um, Jamie and Tony, I'd like to ask, is there uh, one important thing that you want to tell somebody who's struggling um, with doing their social media that would just be encouraging? So if you can both answer that, we'll jump into some Q&A and uh, go from there. So uh, Tony, why don't you go ahead and, and kick it off? Sure. Um, I would say, I, I would say, I think two things. I think one is just really know your audience. I think that'll really help mm. minimize the clutter in your brain about what platform should I use? What should I be saying? What It just helps you funnel what you're doing. Um, and then secondly, and I've said this, I think probably like 10 times in this, in this thing, um, don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, it, it can be laid back. It can be flexible. It can be personable and authentic. Um, and, and, and to have fun with it, it's, a, it's a, it's a way brands can have fun in a way that, um, I think historically, like print advertising or different kinds of marketing and PR couldn't be as much. Um, so, but I would say, I would, I would say the number one thing is, is figure out your audience and that would really just help you funnel some of the content and, and things that you're doing. Great. Great. Jamie, what about you? And I would say probably ask for help or like in my experience, I'm young. I kind of jumped in social media because nobody else in my business knew what social media was and we weren't using it. So for me, who doesn't have like lots of like technical experience, I usually just literally ask for help. Like I'll ask my older employees, how does this sound? And I'll ask my younger employees, how does this sound to kind of help me figure out what to do next? So some mornings I'm just stumped and I don't know what to do and I'll ask for help. So don't think that you're alone. That's great, Jamie. Thank you. Um, cool. I like that. Uh, keep it simple and laid back and just don't feel like you're, you have to do this in a bubble. I think those are, those are great ways that we can just kind of make this work a little bit better. So, um, before we get into, uh, talking about the, the next meetup here. Um, Scott, what questions do we have? I know there's a couple yeah. on the Q and A. We do, we've got a few few uh, good ones here. So uh, we, I know a lot of people own uh, retreat facilities or they have some uh, tour groups that they manage. One of the questions is they don't get permission from their guests uh, for photography or to post photos for their marketing. Um, and this goes back to, I guess, sharing posts that people have done previously on their own channels. 
are they able to do that legally if they've posted them on their on their social media channels are they able to legally repost those on their own social channels so i know <laughs> so we were we went through all of this at 10,000 villages of trying to figure out how to you know the legality of certain things the best the best thing that we we came across and Jamie you might speak more into this than I than I can but uh, we created a brand hashtag and I don't want to go all the way down that road but we had some sort of hashtag that that um, visitors could use in their posts so it was live life fair for 10,000 villages and they could use that um, in their posts and then we would find those posts and we had some verbiage around if you use this this you know our our company hashtag uh you're you're allowing us to repost this um but we would, it doesn't hurt to reach out to them in a direct message and just say oh my gosh you know we love your photo it's great um can we repost it can we use it on our social platforms a lot of people really i'm not going to say everyone but a lot of users really like that I know I've done that before. Would I take, you know, one of the, I'm totally one of those people who like take an artsy photo of my coffee at like square one. And like, you know, if they were like, can I repost it? I'm like, yes, like, that's awesome. Like, um, so there are people who are willing. Um, so even if you see a photo and you're like, wow, this is gorgeous. This is great. We'd love to rep uh, repost it, give you credit. It wouldn't hurt to reach out to them and just, just ask. Yeah, I never post something with that. Always ask. And if you can't ask, then just don't use it. It's way worse for somebody to be like, you stole my picture or I don't want to be on your page than the hundred of likes that you're going to get. So always ask for permission. And if you can't, then just find new ones that you can. Great. Great. All right. Uh, thoughts on YouTube. Uh, what do you post? Do you find it valuable? Sneak peeks? Does it work? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think video content's really, really useful. YouTube, I think, depends on your comp like if if you do a sneak peek or if you do a tour of your facility, I tend to think, and Jamie, you might think otherwise, um, I tend to think uploading that video directly to your social media platform is a great way to get that video content out there. I think you can have a YouTube channel. It, it feels like and maybe this is just my experience coming through, it feels like that's another fairly large thing to take on because you want it to be relevant content and continually uploading videos and things like that. When we have videos, we've, we've uploaded directly to Instagram or Facebook um, just because then it's directly there. It, 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 that's just kind of how we utilize it. So I don't know if that was really helpful. I think if you're evaluating platforms to use, that is a time intensive one. Uh, Jamie, I don't know if you have any other or thoughts on that yeah. or anything otherwise. I agree. Like now that Instagram lets you post longer videos, I would use Instagram, Facebook, you can upload for as long as you want. Even if you already did post on uh, your video on YouTube, when you like literally put the link on your Facebook, that's another link. And for me, mm -hmm. I'm the laziest social media person and which is bad because I literally run social media. If there's a link I have to click and then it opens up a different app, I'm done. Like, I don't even care what it was. I don't want to do it. So making it easy is one of the biggest ones that I always go for. So using YouTube is like the most time consuming thing ever. I personally hate doing it. I don't ever do it. I feel like it needs to be beautiful content. And I just don't have time for that. So I'm always just posting my videos on Facebook and Instagram. But if you want to do YouTube, there's far better resources than probably Tony and I on the internet. <laughs> I will, I'll add to that just to say that it does, it is a, it is a platform that is pretty monstrous. Um, it does, you can just passively post videos to it. It's not going to, there's not going to be anything wrong with that. Uh, yeah. it, probably if you're going to do it that way though, it's probably not worth the effort um, because there is a whole, there are, you could ask our SEO director at our agency that there is a whole strategy um, behind uh, what is essentially a video search engine. Um, and yes, it can be picked up by Google bots, 
Um, yes, they can even kind of understand some of the content of the video without you actually adding any text, but it requires a ton of work. It requires a lot of, I think, some technical knowledge as well. Um, and if we're talking about uh, being efficient with our time and our, our money, um, it's probably not going to pay off uh, if you're just passively posting videos or you shouldn't expect it to pay off uh, in the in forms of any traffic to your site or, or things like that. And I love, honestly, I just want to say, I love what Jamie said about eliminating the barrier of that extra click. I mean, people are scrolling through their feeds. If it doesn't start automatically playing, it's, I mean, you, you lose them. And so I'm glad you mentioned that because I think that's so true. I hate myself sometimes though. <laughs> like this person probably works so hard, but I'm just not going to click on that link. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there. So thank you both very, very much. Um, and uh, you, uh, Tony, especially you set up this, uh, this little plug for next week so nicely, um, talking about, uh, you know, paid ads and how they're a little bit more track, uh, trackable. And um, it is a totally different animal when you go from creating and posting organically or, or just posting, you know, using the post feature uh, and, you know, doing that well. Uh, there is a, a different way of, um, of doing paid ads well. Uh, we're definitely gonna, we're gonna get into some very specific things, um, maybe even show you some account uh, setup information if we can figure out how to do that. Uh, it is very valuable. There is a way you can make it work specifically for the tourism industry. Um, we've, you know, we have the, we've actually had a success with that, um, but it does require a different mindset, a different strategy. So we want to get into uh, paid social ads uh, next month, August 21st. Um, we're going to be doing that again, and we'll have some more details for you as the month goes on. So um, uh, last thing here, just make sure that you're a part of our Facebook group, um, especially when, uh, if, uh, we get to sharing some resources, sharing some other things about uh, what we talked uh, about today. You know, that's where we're going to be posting it. Um, we're going to be posting it in this Facebook group. So I do invite you to uh, follow that link, or, or I believe we have the link in the emails that we send. So just click through to the Facebook group and ask to join. Uh, we'll ask you a few questions just to kind of get to know you. Um, just nothing crazy. Uh, and yeah, you can network and, and work with some other tour operators who are, are joining us and just trying to, trying to make digital marketing work um, so we can better our businesses. So thank you all very much for coming and uh, we hope to see you next time. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Jamie. We'll see you. Okay.